milkers welcome or welcome back to my channel <laughs> i know you're surprised to see me hell i'm surprised that i didn't take another year off after releasing my last video i promise i'll try to be better about my uploading frequency i swear but enough about me you click this video to hear the story of fox's long deceased adhd block and damn it let's get into it Chances are, if you're watching this video, you've likely seen or may have even been a fan of Adult Swim. For over decades, Cartoon Network has been kicking the children out and letting insomniac stoners have all of the late night fun. And for good reason, too. It's clear that Adult Swim has become more popular than Cartoon Network proper over the years. And can you really blame Fox for wanting to get a piece of the pie? I mean, it could be argued that Adult Swim is the house that Fox built, considering how Cartoon Network capitalized on many of the shows that Fox had canceled. Futurama, King of the Hill, and many others really found their marking after making the jump. And who else better to lead the charge at Fox than Nick Weidenfeld, who had been producing for Adult Swim since 2004? Weidenfeld had been responsible for developing hits for Adult Swim such as Children's Hospital, Robot Chicken, and The Boondocks, but for this project he would start his own production company called Friends Night, which would produce shows, bumpers, and advertisements for the block. Y'all want to check out the new Dead Mouse? Oh, hell yeah! Another person who would be brought into the fold was Ben Jones, who was hired as creative director for the project. Jones was coming off of a stint at Cartoon Network himself, having just created the show Problem Solvers. Uh, Problem Solvers as a project did not take off and was roughed up pretty bad by critics, but Jones and Weidenfeld must have gotten along well during their time at Cartoon Network. Once the creative pieces were in place, plans for developing what would become Fox ADHD began to move forward. The name of the block itself was derived from the very popular animation domination block that aired on Fox each Sunday night. The official long form name of the block was the clunky Animation Domination High Def. I guess they really wanted to get that reference to a mental illness in there. Uh, in a way, animation domination high definition could be considered the uglier, edgier brother to animation domination. The visual language of the program was a lot more colorful than when compared to Adult Swim's black and white minimalism. Bumpers would consist of loud music and in-your-face artwork with a heavy lean towards pop culture parody and appreciation. Some of the frequent bumper programming, including riffs on Schoolhouse Rock, scientifically accurate cartoons, and other songs and skits that were designed to trigger viewers' nostalgia. At first, things seemed to be going well for the new programming block. Fox seemed to be all in on the concept, and even gave Axe Cop and High School USA Sunday premieres on the original animation domination block. The shows ended with decent ratings on their premiere, reaching about 1.5 million viewers, which happens to match the infinitely more successful Archer's first season numbers on sister channel FX. Given the ratings for the show on Sunday, Fox had no doubt had high hopes for the next week when ADHD would debut proper on Saturday. The first couple of weeks in the usual rotation seemed to be going well, but trouble was brewing in the background. First of all, Fox had drawn the ire of parental TV groups who did not appreciate the more mature humor and content of the shows, particularly High School USA. The Parents TV Council, one of those watchdog groups, posted on their website that they had reached out to the block sponsors and gotten some of them to drop their advertising dollars. Without significant advertising spending, ratings would need to be very high to justify airing ADHD. Another factor in play was the fact that Adult Swim was starting to hit a peak around 2013. This was a time when Adult Swim still had the rights to Fox shows such as King of the Hill and Family Guy, which were far more popular than the new crop of ADHD programming. Adult Swim had also noticed the rise of anime in pop culture and revived their Toonami block, placing it on Saturday nights in direct competition to ADHD. Shows like Inuyasha and Cowboy Bebop were starting to pick up steam, and viewers often chose to spend time with Toonami over Fox's options. 
The relationship between Adult Swim and ADHD seems to have been a complicated one. It seems that Fox certainly saw ADHD as competition for Adult Swim, but I'm not sure that Cartoon Network viewed it the same way. Adult Swim had actually paid for two ads on the original ADHD broadcast, and it had been reported, but not verified, that Adult Swim had purchased the ads through local ad buying services to avoid tipping off Fox. The first ad Adult Swim aired essentially playfully insinuated that ADHD was a cheap copy of Adult Swim. The second ad that Adult Swim purchased was a little bit nicer to Fox, congratulating them on their first night and saying that they were going back home. At the time, ADHD executives took a calm approach to this tactic, thanking Adult Swim on Twitter for their money. At this point, it seemed that Fox had gotten the industry's attention, and it looked like they'd be able to get viewers' attention as well. As the block rolled into its normal Saturday night time slot, that optimism started to turn into desperation really quickly. The network originally gave the block an hour and a half, but shortened that block to one hour when they realized that the local news was pulling stronger ratings. As far as the two shows that had debuted at this time, they would have fit right in at Adult Swim, but on Fox they tended to stick out awkwardly. Axe Cop was certainly more in line with the usual animation domination fare and likely would have done well on the Sunday block. Aside from the gimmick of it all being written from a child's perspective, it really didn't stray too far outside normal lines. It had a very strong celebrity voice cast as well, with Nick Offerman voicing Axe Cop and other voices being supplied by Ken Moreno, Dan Harmon, and Patton Oswalt, among others. If anything, Axe Cop's animation was crisper than what was standard for Adult Swim at the time. My only issue with the show is that the childlike nature can wear a little thin after a while, and the fact that everything is solved with the simplest of actions ensured that the show had no stakes and no real way to grow. Honestly, though, I have much higher opinion of Axe Cop than I do of the other show that premiered with ADHD, High School USA. Now, this show was created by Moral Oral creator Dino Stemtopoulos. High School USA, it took the look and style of Archie Comics, but twisted it into an adult comedy. Unlike Moral Oral, however, I honestly didn't sh find the show to be very funny. In my opinion, it feels like the worst of Family Guy all stitched together with an even thinner plot line than the average episode. But if you think a black guy being half Jewish with the name Blackstein is funny, eh, maybe the show will rank higher for you, I don't know. <laughs> More important than my opinion, however, is the ratings. Unfortunately for Fox, ADHD ratings never really hit the peak they had hoped for. Remember, 2013 was a much different time than 2024. Streaming wasn't king, and TV ratings still very much mattered. After the block's first two shows failed to get an audience, it became clear that the performance of the next batch of shows would likely seal its fate. Much like the first two shows that ADHD launched with, its second crop of shows were both a hit and a miss for me. I found Lucas Brothers Moving Company to be a very charming, intelligent show masquerading as a stoner comedy. I appreciate the pop culture references. For example, there are episodes dedicated to wrestling and 1990s sitcom Sister Sister. I understand it's a divisive show and putting it on a major network was a gamble. The other new show, Goal in the Insatiable, wasn't my style. In my review notes, I wrote that the show seems to derive much of its humor from the volume of its characters. And the show has an interesting history, having been created for the website Something Awful, and then brought out on ADHD, and then later being retooled with higher caliber voice actors for the traditional Sunday block. Honestly, nothing about this show really interests me, and I'm surprised Fox tried so hard to get the concept to work. The show is about a young goth girl who befriends a demigod named Golan the Insatiable. Golan must learn to live with the young girl's family while trying to fit into modern society. The creator of the show, Josh Miller, must love fish out of water stories though. He went on to create the very successful Sonic the Hedgehog movie. And regardless of my opinion, these new shows did not catch on with viewers and it was soon announced that Fox was canceling ADHD. The reason given at the time was that the local Fox affiliates were getting frequent complaints about the racy content in the show. I'm sure it didn't help that no matter what the network tried, Adult Swim was constantly beating them in the ratings. It would be unfortunately curtains for the ADHD experiment.
Except this really wasn't the end of it at all. In a crazy twist of fate, it just so happened that Fox had launched a sister network to FX called FXX in 2013, and they needed new programming for this channel. FXX being aimed at an 18 to 35 year old demographic and focusing primarily on comedies made it seem like a good place for ADHD to get a second chance. Uh, with The Simpsons as its lead up, the network made the decision to move forward with the ADHD experiment again. The new FXX version of the programming block started out by focusing on replays of the shows that had previously aired on Fox, but after burning all of their reruns, the block got two new shows added in. The first of these new shows was a surrealist trip called Stone Quackers, and it was developed by Ben Jones, who also developed Problem Solvers. Considering that some have called Problem Solvers the ugliest show in cartoon history, I was expecting something a bit grotesque, but what I got was maybe even worse. It was just mid. I watched a few episodes for this video, and what I'll say is that it feels like an adult version of some of the worst mid-2010 Nickelodeon shows, and not even the presence of the great John C. Riley could save this one. The other show that premiered on the FX-exified programming block was Major Laser, created by musician Diplo to promote his electro dance project of the same name. Of all the ADHD shows, I get the sense that this one had the biggest budget and the most work put into it. And all I can say is, thank God that this show has a different look to it. It's a G.I. Joe-inspired animation and action-oriented style, and that sets it apart from other ADHD shows. And in the show, Major Lazer is a Jamaican superhero who primarily fights for your right to smoke weed and listen to music. The voice acting and music in the show was done by some big celebrities, including... Girl of the Summer, Charlie XCX, Sia, J.K. Simmons, John Boyega, and many more. Alas, even the popularity of Diplo and those voice actors couldn't save ADHD. After Major Lazer's first season, it was first announced the show would get a second season, but FXX quickly backpedaled after John Boyega dropped out of the show to focus on Star Wars. With the death of Major Lazer and no other shows comparable to it in popularity, FXX decided that it was just getting out of the ADHD business. By the time the announcement was made, so many people had stopped watching and other people hadn't even been paying attention. So no one really even noticed the cancellation, unfortunately. Uh, the team that was working on the original animations uh, moved a lot of their content to YouTube, working under the channel name AOK. -OK. It seems that they closed their channel up in 2020, though as those were the last uploads. You're about to enter the courtroom. The cases are real. The people are real. And the decision is final. The court will now hear case 1337, Princess Peach versus Mario Mario. Overall, I'm of the opinion that the ADHD block was somehow both ahead of its time with the non sequiturs and original animated content, but also behind the times because Adult Swim was just a juggernaut at this time. Perhaps if the creative team had started the AOK -OK YouTube channel and stuck with creating short content, maybe they would have had more success. Uh, many of the shows aired during this period felt pretty stretched thin. I think that the short animated parodies and musical content were certainly more fulfilling. Perhaps someday another competitor to Adult Swim will come along, and hopefully they can learn from the mistakes that Fox made. We do not need more of the same adult animated content. As a viewing audience, we demand more creativity in this space. And with that, I'm off to go watch some Aqua Teen Hunger Force or Space Ghost Coast to Coast. I'll go dig some of those DVDs up. Thank you for watching, and if you would like to help a new person in this YouTube game, please consider subscribing. In any case, have a great day.